It is rebuild time, ladies and gentlemen, and this is one of the most highly requested rebuilds. I am today rebuilding Birmingham City. Yes, Murph FM, eat your heart out. If we dive into the game, this is Birmingham City, of course. They are two-time winners of the Carabao Cup. Obviously, they got that victory in 2011. One-time winner of Skybet League One. We don't want to be touching that one at all. Two-times winners of the Papa John's Trophy. Again, another title and another trophy we do not want. But they are three-time winners of the Skybet Championship. Our goal today, use the young players in their team, get them back into the Premier League. And if we can add a bit of silverware, wouldn't that just be fantastic? This is the team, or this is the tactic we're going to be using. It is the GYR Swanzalona V2. This is the one I'm using on my save with FC Versailles on twitch.tv forward slash UK. Come and check that save out. It's coming to a close. It is a really, really interesting save, and we are using this tactic as well. But we are going down the route of using these young three players. Obviously, uh, Jordan, Jordan James? Yeah, Jordan James, George Hall, and Job Bellingham. They are going to make up my triangle in midfield. Um, and they are some highly promising youngsters as well. Looking at George Hall, first and foremost, 18 years of age, 5 foot 11. Uh, he is on the young side, of course, but he is primed to be my box-to-box -box midfielder this year. His cons is he's listed as a good EFL League One player. And of course, we're going to be playing him in the championship alongside Jordan James as the defense or as the two sitting midfielders here. Uh, he's slightly more creative, can't tackle as well. So hence why he's not the box-to-box -box midfielder. He's the deep line playmaker. Again, leading EFL League One player. Uh, again, we're going to be running him in the championship. And then, of course, a 16-year-old Job Bellingham. No Jude Bellingham here. We've got Job. Um, and he looks really good, actually, for 16 years of age. I think he's... I can't keep saying that. Um, he looks really good. I, I, I'm thinking his first touch and his pass and his technique is really good so that's why i'm going to be using him as a central attacking midfielder uh he's got that five star potential ability but at the moment he's currently a league two standard player i'm gonna be playing him regardless of the fact of his age i just want to get him game time and see how he is going to do if we dive into the competition stamp guys this is the three competitions that we do have obviously the sky bet championship the emirates fa cup and the carabao cup where we do have crawley town in that first round the board wants us to be competitive in both uh, of the domestic cups and avoid a relegation battle in the Skybet Championship. If we have a look at things and the season preview, uh, we are top at the moment. Stop the count. Um, but no, we are predicted to finish in 21st, 50 to 1 to win the title. Obviously, we do have the likes of Burnley, Watford, Norwich have been relegated. We do have Sheffield United, Middlesbrough, West Brom, some of the big boys here. Uh, and then obviously my Bristol City as well. So fingers crossed uh, <laughs> fingers crossed they do well if we do well as well um one thing i will touch on of course is the finances here at birmingham um wage budget is okay overall balance is actually in the positive at the moment but yeah net debt almost 88 million pounds worth of net debt we'll be keeping an eye on this as well because i assume at some point the owners are going to sell up but let's see what happens in season number one guys and let's see how we get on in the championship <laughs> So guys, in real life, Birmingham actually managed to finish, I think it was 16th in the Skybet Championship. We've done a little bit better than that. We did get all the way to the playoff final where we took on Hull City and beat them three goals to two. It took all the time to go into extra time. Uh, we took the lead through Tahith Chong, a second from Jordan James inside the first 10 minutes. The Brum fans were going mad. Uh, and then Hull City came back into it. Jacob Greaves equalized, uh, got a goal back. Adama Traore, yes, Adama Traore got the equalizer before Scott Hogan scored in the 95th minute. Looking at things here though, guys, they were probably about edging it, but we got the job done with our young trio in center midfield. And I'm really, really happy to say that we did get promoted. If we have a look at the league table, uh, and let's just show the league table, you can see Norwich got promoted with 105 points. Borough also going up with 96 points. Blackburn, Sheffield United, ourselves, and Hull City in that playoffs. We knocked out Sheffield United, Hull City knocked out Blackburn, and then obviously we beat them in the final. Troy Deeney 
was the third top goal scorer in the league, guys. 32 goals for Troy Deeney. Um, he's 34. I won't be renewing his contract because he can barely move now, guys. Um, so we are going to see what we can do in the Premier League and see about replacing him. I think it's going to be a very interesting one to talk about in the Premier League. In terms of the other competitions, guys, we got to the fourth round of the Emirates FA Cup. We were knocked out by Norwich City, the team who won the championship, of course. And then we were knocked out in the third round of the Carabao Cup by Hull, um, who we obviously then knocked out of the playoff final. So I know which one I would have rather won. Let's talk about the finances, guys, because obviously we are going into the Premier League. We do have 13, almost 13.8 million pounds worth of debt now in our overall balance. <sighs> Things are not good. Obviously, you can see the financial status at the top there says that we are in debt. If we have a look at the debts and loans, that's gone up now to 92.7 million pounds. And I've got 34 or just under 35 million pounds worth of transfer budget to go into the Premier League. The wage budget has improved a touch, um, but I can only retain 20% of all revenue made by transfers. Um, so we're going to have to be a bit frugal. We're probably going to move a lot of it into the wage budget and see what we can do for season number two here at St. Andrews. Right, guys, so here are the transfers going into season number two. And I know what you're thinking. That left-hand side column looks very empty, Steve. And yes, it does. But this is because we got some business done really early. We sold two players, Chris Ogar. He has gone to Bournemouth under 18s. And we sold Josh Home for um, a, a bit as well. He's gone to Brentford's under 18s. Almost a million pounds between these two guys. Obviously, we need to try and balance the books a tad as well. Uh, so we got those deals done early early and got them over the line let's talk about some of the other players that have gone obviously we've got a couple of players here joshua williams leaving to coventry's under 21s but i feel like we've been pretty good with the transfers on the players that we've brought in elia caprelli uh, otherwise known in, in my chat as capri sun over on twitch he's come in um one of the best young goalkeepers in the game came in from bali for six million uh billy cometo comes in as a center back option for a six foot five of big beefy frenchman he was a free transfer and I think he looks quite good as well. Uh, stream favourite again, Sharon Dorr comes in on a free transfer. This man is always released by Benfica. And he's about to win a Champions League in my Twitch save. So you can kind of see the level that I'm pitching this at. 19 years of age. He's six foot three. Can play in midfield. I love Sharon Dorr. Um, in the centre-back positions, we picked up Diego Coppola for £5.75 million. Pounds. He's 19 years of age. Comes from Verona over in Italy. Um, he's just a big, beefy man. Potential to be a wonder kid as well in Coppola so he can go alongside Caprelli and they can speak nice Italian to each other uh, we picked up Baba Rahman uh, from Chelsea he was being transfer listed so we picked him up for pretty cheap he is costing us a lot in terms of his contract 71,000 a week uh, but he has signed from Chelsea for 350k Scott, McCon uh, Scott McKenna comes in from Nottingham Forest he comes in obviously to be a bit of a centre back for us a bit of a leader he's six foot two, 26 years of age uh, Scottish international I'm actually quite a big fan of him. He came in uh, for relatively cheap, I would say, for a Premier League proven player. 625k for him. And Javi Manquillo comes in from Newcastle United for £1.8 million. Really improves that right back position. If we have a look at the tactic, guys, obviously we're still running the same three. So I'm not going to quick pick the rest of these guys. Um, but as you can see, the progression is quite nice. Uh, George Hall has improved quite nicely. I will show you guys these uh, three players at the end of the save. Uh, Jordan James as well and show you their, their overall progression all time. But uh, Jordan James looking like a nice little well-rounded player as well. And Joe Bellingham is now a League One standard player, guys. And I think attribute wise, he still looks very, very good despite the fact that he is 17. Um, so in terms of everything i think the team's pretty good obviously we're going to be in the premier league now we do have to try and see what we can do in the prem i'm not actually holding my breath the board expectation is to fight bravely against relegation they just want us to be competitive in the other trophies guys the premier league is the bread and butter if we have a look at the season preview we are predicted to finish stone dead last a thousand to one uh to win the league um other promoted teams norwich and middlesbrough have much better odds than we do obviously nobody in the media dream 11 at this point um we will be trying to see what we can do though i'm actually quite happy with the team and the players that i've put together we are now in the positive we have had a takeover we're no longer in debt 
um, but the overall balance is under 500k so it's not great i've still got money to spend in stuff i'd love to be able to move it more into the wage budget so i'm not overspending but i can't do that for some reason if we have a look at the debts and the loans basically we're still in debt we still got a massive net debt we still got some transfer debt as well um, we need to try and get rid of as much of this as humanly possible and the best way that i know how to do this is staying in the premier league let's get through season two and see how we go on Okay, guys, so season two is done and dusted, and we have survived in the Premier League. We finished in 14th in the end, so we actually finished, if you look at the league table, above the likes of Leicester City, Leeds United, Southampton, Fulham, Forest, and Middlesbrough, who were promoted alongside us. They finished bottom of the league. Norwich, though, absolutely killed it and finished in seventh, which is just absolutely ludicrous. I have to give a massive shout-out to Sam Cosgrove. <sighs> He's just not... like. If you look on the right-hand side, he's a good League 2, League 1 level player. And he scored 14 goals for us in uh, in all competitions. 13 in the Premier League because I messed up and didn't sign a striker. I let Troy Deeney go because of his age. And this guy had to score the goals for us. And he did he, he did, he did, what he needed to do, man. He, he absolutely killed it. We got to the fourth round of the FA Cup as well. Um, we got into... Obviously, we started in the third round. We scored one goal, one one nil. Uh, we got knocked out in the second round of the Carabao Cup by West Ham United. But we do stay in the division. We finished relatively strongly towards the end of it. If you look at the schedule, we had a nice little April here where we played a lot of the teams in and around us, actually, apart from Norwich. Um, and then we got pumped in the last three games of the season, especially a 5-1 loss to Liverpool away at Anfield on the final day of the season. But we did the main thing. We survived in the Prem. And if we go and have a look at our finances now, the overall balance is positive. As I said, being in the Premier League helps, guys. Our financial status has gone in a season, basically, gone from in debt to okay to rich. That's that's the difference of being in the in the English leagues and being in the Premier League, and that's why I find England a touch boring. If we have a look at the debts and the loans, guys, we've now got a net debt of two point seven million pounds. It's all gone basically, and we do have some uh, fifty two million outstanding as a chairperson loan. Premier League, man. Premier League life, uh, life is nuts. We're still only retaining 20% of the transfer revenue, uh, but we do have £43 million to spend and basically um, uh, an extra, what's that, 100 k in our wage budget. So uh, have a guess where I'm going to be spending this, guys. We need some forwards. Let's go sign some. So guys, in season number three, we got our business done really, really early and we picked up some absolute gems, which I am really excited to show you guys now. Um, the main sort of players coming in, I'll, I'll talk, to, talk about the biggest one first and foremost, is Anthony Gordon. He was transfer listed by Newcastle. I felt like upgrading in that winger position was really key. He can play on both sides of the field. He's really fast, 17 acceleration, 16 pace high determination and I still think he's got a lot to learn he didn't get into the team too much after his transfer to Newcastle so I'm hoping maybe he's going to want to get his career back on track here uh, we also picked up Hugo Sique is how I'm going to butcher this uh, Belgian dude's name uh, very well-rounded right back as well obviously him and Mankio will be the main two players to play in that position for me. Uh, Adrian Tufet comes in from Rennes. He is a left back to play on the other side of the defence. He's now valued at 20 to 25 million pounds. We paid Rennes uh, 5.75 million pounds for his services. And we also picked up this guy, uh, Warmed Amari. He comes in for 1.6 million. Again, another centre back option, 24 years of age, well rounded, uh, can be a good body for us in that position. We also uh, brought in a couple of players on free transfers. Obviously, once contracts have had expired we brought in uh, Mika Biret is a player I'm not really heard of before he comes in from Arsenal um, seems very well-rounded a nice improvement for us in that striker position uh, Pioni Sisto comes in another winger again on both sides um, high pace high acceleration high dribbling uh, can be good on both flanks again a nice good player for us here uh, he came in from uh, Michelin obviously after his contract was up Lucas Rodriguez comes in as well a central attacking midfielder can play on the left can play in central midfield obviously I'm still going to start my main three players of Hall, uh, uh, Jordan and um, and Job obviously uh, but 
I think we need a good um, amount of depth. This guy was a free transfer uh, coming in, so it's, it's very difficult to say no to some of these. My main guy up front is going to be Christian Kwame. He comes in uh, from the Celia. Uh, Ivory Coast International, really good, really fast as well. 16 uh, pace, 17 acceleration, mainly to play as a striker, but can play on either wing as well if required. Um, I'm hoping he can be our main goal threat this season. Uh, and then the last place, uh, last person is Leighton Clarkson, obviously released by Liverpool in this instance. Um, again, supremely well-rounded, but is a little bit short and a little bit lacking on the physical side. But I think, again, a nice bit of a uh, uh, depth for us here. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to keep George Hall here. And then I'm going to open up the other slot because the main reason is... Um, uh, uh, Jordan James isn't really developing into the player that I like him to be. I feel like the other two guys are doing a little bit better and he's injured and he's suspended. He's suspended in both the FA Cup, the EFL Cup and the Premier League. So this man loves bookings. It's uh, He cannot play in England for two games and he's injured. So we're going to leave that slot open a little bit. Speaking of bookings, George Hall is also suspended. But he's developed a lot better for me. Uh, now a three and a half Mazzala to play in that central midfield. Valued at 40 to 46 million pounds. And then of course we'll talk about Job as well. Uh, he is now valued at 31 to 39 million pounds. He's now a good championship level player. So he's improving season on season. He's going to have another year in the Prem. Uh, see how he does get on. But in terms of our squad depth now, guys, we're definitely feeling a little bit better. If I just just to show you what the team would look like, quick pick without restriction, our best 11. We have Caprelli, Manquillo, Coppola, McKenna, uh, Tufelt, uh, Clarkson Hall, Chong, Rodriguez, Gordon, and Kwame. If we were to play our best 11, I think this is looking like a lower tier Premier League team now. Uh, we've got a bit more depth, got a bit more ability, and I'm really hoping we can go on and kind of push forward a little bit in season number three. Um, so we are in the Premier League, of course, so we are expected to fight bravely against relegation. We do have the other two domestic cup competitions. If we take a look at the season preview, guys, we were 1,000 to 1 last season. That hasn't improved, despite the fact I spent more money on the team. Obviously, everyone else in England has improved as well. But recently, promoted. Bournemouth, Palace and Wolves are all predicted to do much better than me. Um and Norwich, despite being in the Europa League, are uh, now back in the relegation candidates, which is very interesting to see uh, Liverpool favourites to win the title. I want to see what we can do in season number three. I'm actually backing us to have a good year. I'd love a little bit of mid-table on the beach by sort of April time. That would be fantastic. So season number three, we are done and dusted and what I kind of asked for, we definitely got. Mid-table mediocrity, we finished in 13th, but we have a minus 24 goal difference. That is just ludicrous. Liverpool do go on to win the title. The teams that get relegated though, Wolves, Southampton, Bournemouth, we're nowhere near it in the end. 49 points for us, 27 was the level that hit the drop. Christian Kwame was our top goal scorer in the Prem with 27 goals. He got 30 in all comps, this lad. Um, very, very nice. Uh, if I change uh, the plans to his career stats, yeah, he came in from Valencia, starts at Fiorentina, uh, a very good player. Knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup by Liverpool, knocked out in the third round of the Carabao Cup by Leicester City. Ultimately, I'm really happy with this. Like, I can quite easily see what the problem is. The problem is we are shipping far too many goals. We scored four, uh, sorry, 60, um, 68 but conceded 92. If we look at that, that is the most conceded in the league by quite a long way, but luckily we were good enough to score a decent amount of goals. So we did finish in that mid table. So we are gonna go and we are gonna improve defensively. If we have a look at the finances now, let's first of all look at the debts and the loans. No net debt now. We've got a little bit of transfer debt and we only owe the chairman 45 million quid now. We're definitely moving in the right direction. We're listed as rich still. And if we look at things, 70 million in the overall balance, as I said, going into the Premier League really does help these sorts of things. Um, 53 million pounds to spend, still only 20% of transfer revenue. I am trying to improve that, but it's just not happening. Um, so we're going to have to see what we can do. There are going to be defenders on the chopping block. And I really, really want to finish next season with a positive goal difference. Let's go defender shopping. Okay, guys. So we are season four now. And I am really happy with the business that we have done. Starting off with the transfers out. Pioni Sisto is the first player to depart. He leaves the club for £3.9 million. He wanted to play more first team football. He's gone. Baba Rahman has gone as well to Santos Laguna. Um, again, he was on 70k a week. So just to get him out of the club, regardless of fee that we paid for him, I'm just happy to have his wage off the books. We did spend a lot of money, though. 
If you look at the columns on the left-hand side, we've spent a lot of money. If we talk about the big boy first, Michael Elise comes in £65 million. Pounds. It's a lot. I understand it's a lot. I get it. He is a very, very, very good player, though. Um, obviously, Palace, a little bit hit and miss in, in, in saves uh, nowadays. So, 16 dribbling, 16 free kick taking, 16 flair, high passing, high pace, high acceleration. He's the perfect player for me. Him on one side, Anthony Gordon on the other side, I think can cause a lot of damage. We've also brought in Josh Brownhill as well, supremely well-rounded midfielder and can play in a number of positions. Former Bristol City lad, so obviously I'm going to be keen on Josh Brownhill. Obviously, he's at Burnley in real life right now uh, he came in for 6.25 million mario lamoso comes in um uh, from a club in portugal um he's gone straight back out on loan he is a new gen uh, he's not real he has got the zealand new gen face pack on him um and he is fantastic basically for a new gen i'm really really happy with him needs to play a bit more which is why he's gone out on loan but i think he could be a good valuable player for us in the future, we've also brought in Cesar Rincon. He is a new gen. Also, as you can probably tell, doesn't have a face pack on him. Again, much the same. He looks like a very good player if we open up his attributes again. Um, uh, quite looking forward to seeing what he can do. He is a tad short at 5'10", though. Just We'll, we'll see. 1.5 million could rise to 2.9. But we have signed a big boy, an actual central defender. This guy, Anthony uh, uh, Ruelt, is how I'm going to butcher this Frenchman's name. 24 years of age, 6'1". High jumping ability, uh, jump in reach, high heading ability. I think this guy's really, really going to help us on set pieces, both attacking and defensively. Uh, I'm really hoping he can go on to be a very good, good player for us. But yes, I understand we've spent... Oh, we've, we've spent a lot of money. Um, if we quick pick without restriction, our best 11. This is the team, though. And I'm actually really confident in this team. I think we're going to finish inside the top half of the table. I'd love to be pushing towards like a conference league, Europa League kind of place with this sort of team. Um, Caprelli and Goal, Manquillo, uh, Rulaut. I'm definitely butchering this dude's name every single time I say it differently. Uh, McKenna, uh, Tufferet, uh, Brownhill, alongside Hall now, Elise, Job. Gordon, Kwame, I'm happy. I, I really like this three behind the striker as well. I think they've got a lot to offer. Uh, let's touch on Job now. He's got 16 first touch as well. He's developing really nice. He's still listed as a good championship player, guys. But I think attribute-wise, I think his distribution's been really good. It's just really well-rounded, 15 passing and stuff like that as well. High anticipation. These boys are really good. I'm expecting big, big things. If we go into the competitions, the board expectation is to still fight bravely against relegation. We were 1,000 to 1 the last two seasons. We're now only 800 to 1. Recently promoted Blackburn Rovers are 1,000 to 1. They are at the bottom. Um, I'm expecting us to do much better than that, to be honest, guys. I kind of want to be finishing somewhere between 7th and 10th is kind of where I'm in it this season um so i'm hoping we can do really really well i've just noticed man city don't have any european football what happened they finished eighth if man city can finish eighth maybe i can finish eighth let's see what we can do in season number four <laughs> So season four is definitely one to remember for the Blues fans. We finished in fifth in the Premier League, guys. We finished in fifth. It was a much better season than I thought that we were going to have. I obviously addressed those defensive issues and those defensive frailties. Obviously, some of that will come into the new players that we did sign. But you have to remember, I signed a lot of younger players. So they're going to get better and better as the save goes on. As they get older and more mature, they're obviously going to make less mistakes and just genuinely be better which is great to see we finished in fifth liverpool win the league um, then man city then chelsea then arsenal then ourselves so we will be going into the champions league um i don't understand why we've qualified for the champions league but we're in the champions league um so are leicester city down there they won the europa league i believe if we go into their schedule they did they beat ren in that final europa league final uh, four goals to nil so high English representation in the Champions League next season. Tottenham and Newcastle are in the Europa League. And Manchester United are in the uh, Conference League. Palace, Brighton, Fulham all relegated as well. Uh, Christian Kwame continues to be our fantastic man up top. Um, he's just dominating really. Uh, 37 appearances in all comps. 31 goals for the big striker. Um, I'm really, really happy with signing him on uh, on the deal that we did. We got to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup where we did eventually lose to uh, to Southampton, who I cannot 
see in the Premier League. Please tell me we didn't lose to a team that we lost to a team that won the championship. They've got Antonio Conte as their manager. Okay. Then we got knocked out in the third round of the Carabao Cup by Blackburn. Um, again, r r relatively disappointing. Blackburn, who they uh, did actually stay up in the Prem. So big shout out to those guys. Um, if we expand the league table, though, you can kind of see, obviously, we were very defensively poor last year, but we're the second highest goal scoring team in the league behind Liverpool. And we've addressed some of those defensive issues as well. We're still in the lower ends. Um, obviously, we're not as good as we probably should be in terms of those defensive abilities. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll try and see what we can do uh, to improve for season number five. If we have a look at our finances though guys, obviously the overall balance is staying about the same now, which I'm quite happy with. The transfer budget is staying a ballpark around the same, it's between 40 and 55 million at the most. Um, and then the net debt has kind of creeped up a little bit. Obviously I've got some transfer debt, that's all pretty much a lease. But we only owe 37 million pounds back to our chairman now, which is really nice. I'm actually happy with the progress that it's, it's kind of been doing off the field because I've not really been able to improve the facilities or anything like that because of some of these financial restrictions and some of the debt that we do have let's go spend that 45 million for this all important fifth and final season so guys before we go into season number five this is the moment where i ask if you are still watching the rebuild and you are enjoying it to comment something down below to let me know that you got all the way to season number five and all i want you to comment down below because i think it will confuse him is just comment hi murph fm he will be watching this because he is a birmingham fan obviously we do our network save on a wednesday on twitch um so just comment hi murph fm down below uh, i think it'll be very interesting to see how many of you guys get to this point of the save um so we are talking transfers then for this fifth and final season there's a couple that i do need to touch on a little bit um the first and foremost uh is this guy paul uh, uh, lirola is how i'm gonna say his name he's a right back spanish right back 28 years of age he come uh in uh just uh to start this uh transfer influx for the fifth and final season 6.5 million pounds he came in from Elche. Uh, we also signed Tariq Butchman. Uh, looking at him, he looks supremely well-rounded, actually, for a 21-year-old centre-back. High determination, unbelievable mentals, all in double digits. Unbelievable physicals, all in double digits. 16 jumping reach, and technically he's very good where he needs to be as well, guys. So he comes in. Uh, I've not seen this guy before, uh, but the fact that he's got a, a silhouette here... I think he's going to be very good and it looks like he's a real player, which is absolutely crazy. And then our biggest transfer, guys, Dominic Sabozlai comes in from RB Leipzig on a free transfer. Yes, a free transfer for Dominic Sabozlai, one of the best wonder kids in the game. Um, in my opinion, I think Sabolz is absolutely fantastic. Um, free transfer. Could not believe my luck when I saw that he was willing to come to St. Andrews. Um, so if we quick pick without restriction, our best 11, we are definitely a Premier League caliber team now. And I think we're a good Premier League caliber team as well. Caprelli is still there. Uh, Lirola is at right back. Roulat is at centre back alongside McKenna. Uh, Tufelt is at uh, left back. George Hall still a mainstay in this team as our box to box midfielder. He's looking supremely well rounded still, uh, which I'm quite happy with. He will play alongside. So, so Bosley, Alise on the right, Bellingham in the middle, Gordon on the left, and Kwame up top. Job uh, is looking fantastic still. Needs to work on his physicals, but he is only 20 years of age. Um, he's now a decent Premier League player, guys. It only took four seasons to get him there, but he is now a decent Premier League player. If we go into the competitions, obviously we ludicrously somehow qualify for the Champions League. Um, so we have the Premier League, the Champions League the Emirates FA Cup, and of course the Carabao Cup as well. The board expectation is to be competitive in all the cups. We'll try our best. We enter the league phase of the Champions League, so that's more money. Um, but we do, uh, we are expected to avoid relegation from the Premier League, uh, despite finishing so high up the league last season. Uh, we are predicted to finish in 13th with our Champions League action. Um, newly promoted Wolves seems like they're yo-yoing up and down at the moment. Um, they are predicted to finish above us. So let's see if we can be the best team in the Midlands uh, and see what we can do. Um, let's simulate the fifth and final season and see what it can bring. Okay, okay, okay. The Champions League caused us some issues. We actually had a dip in performance in the Premier League in season number five, but we do finish in eighth and we qualify for the Europa League, which I'm actually all right with. And we also go on to lift another Carabao Cup. It's only one bit of silverware, really, because I'm not counting the Championship Playoff Trophy as a proper trophy. I, it, it's a very important game to win. 
it's not a trophy in my opinion um so we've added a trophy to the trophy cabinet let's start there first obviously we got to the caravan cup final we took on tottenham in that final and we beat them at three goals to two if i expand this you can see uh nelson viper scored the opener for tottenham sharon Dorf equalized kevin alvarez then restored tottenham's lead uh which mika Beres yeah, cancelled out and then Christian Kwame the man who's been scoring so many goals for us scored the winner on the 73rd minute looking at the stats in the game Tottenham definitely deserved to win this one uh, but their goalkeeper uh, has has kind of killed them as per uh, it's not Hugo Lloris anymore it's this guy Renato Solis and he had a stinker at a 5.9 rating so we win another Carabao Cup if we go into our uh, history and our overview you can now see the third Carabao Cup 2011's memories will live on long and strong but we've added the 2027 Carabao Cup as well if we go back to the competitions time we got knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup by Leeds United not too bad we did get through to the round of 16 of the Champions League We'll talk about that in a second. I'll, I'll flick up the league stage. Uh, but then we took on Real Madrid and it did not go well. They beat a 7-3 on aggregate, um, which I'm not really surprised about. If we look at the league phase, we qualified in seventh um, in the league phase. I'll show you the run uh, to both the uh, Carabao Cup and the Champions League in just a second. And then in the Premier League, uh, we finished in eighth. Um, qualified for the Europa League, which I'm actually quite happy about. We finished above Chelsea. We finished above Arsenal. Um, I think I, I think we can be quite happy with how things have gone there. Liverpool winning all five Premier Leagues in this particular uh, rebuild. So let's talk about some of these runs to the final. If we filter out the competitions, let's first of all talk about the EFL Cup. This season, we knocked out Arsenal, Bournemouth, Middlesbrough, Leicester in the semi-final, obviously then beating Spurs in that final. And then in the Champions League, obviously we did qualify automatically a relatively easy run in the group stage before getting buzzsawed by Real Madrid uh, we took on Atalanta Galatasaray Dortmund all, th all three victories there without even conceding a goal lost to Barcelona beat PSV Eindhoven thumped and I mean thumped Antwerp nine goals to three it was absolutely ridiculous lost to Bayern beat Atletico and then took on Real Madrid we lost 5-2 in the Bernabeu and then lost 2-1 back at St Andrews with Vinicius Jr. scoring the two goals. So, I've finally done it. I've finally rebuilt Birmingham City and I hope you guys did enjoy it. Um, if you do like the rebuild content though, guys, and you want to see some more, check out this playlist. It's all the rebuilds that I've done on FM23 so far.